I think it's the first time, certainly that I can remember, where the finance ministers from the 20 strongest economies in the world have failed to discuss free trade. Ranjit Sandhu, London Stone Securities. This week, we have seen a positive batch of euro area data, including euro area business growth, at a six year high. Are you expecting this positive economic data to support the euro currency against global uncertainties such as the US and Brexit? The European data situation has been surprising. Uh, it's been very strong. Um, obviously, when you look at what's going on politically, you know, with the elections in Germany, France, um, you know, the kind of the, the issues with the IMF, with Greece as well, um, you'd have thought that the euro would be under some pressure. Then, of course, you've got Brexit, um, Article 50 being triggered next Wednesday, I think it is, with Theresa May. Um, so it's quite surprising, actually, that the data is quite strong. Um, I've looked at the numbers of our trade assets market, as I'm sure you can imagine, Jack. So, and the way I see it is, I think um, some of it's down to European strength, um, and particularly, I think France and Germany had some very strong numbers. Um, but I think also um, part of it also is a realization, perhaps, that there's a weakness creeping in some of the other um, uh, some of the other statistics. Um, in terms of levels, um, I know since also euro sterling has been been sort of been, been pushing up, but it's still I think it's about eight six fifty now, but it's still some way off from where it was a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I see I see the euro remaining fairly bullish now for the short term, um, but I imagine the second half of the year, I think I think that that strength will um, evaporate. EU finance ministers were left concerned about the future of free trade after a summit of the G20 nations. How should investors view this concern regarding future free trade deals? I think it's a real problem. Um, you know, I mean, I think it's the first time, certainly that I remember, where, um, you know, the, the finance ministers from effectively the, the 20 strongest countries in the world fail to even discuss free trade. You know, that's, it's been one of their, their kind of their, their templates always. Whenever they have these meetings, they all talk about free trade and how they should reject protectionism and everything else. Um, it's no surprise, of course, that Trump now, because he's now in power, and of course, protectionism and particularly the, the border adjustment tax, which is obviously one of his key policies, um, it's, no, it's no coincidence that now, of course, the other 19 member um, nations, if you like, are, have decided not to talk about it. Um, and it's a dangerous, you know, it's a dangerous precedent as well because, you know, the whole idea about these meetings is about free trade, about, you know, free movement of, um, you know, capital across different borders. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's a dangerous, you know, it's a dangerous precedent. And um, I think it's going to be possibly um, the precursor to, you know, barriers coming up and, and how that might affect markets. I mean, obviously, it's going to be negative. Um, it means less trade, obviously, um, and potentially it could actually lead to a trade war. So I'd be very wary about what's going on. I think the biggest loser out of this is probably the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, because um, you know she's been very, very staunch against you know what you call sort of isolation um, or, or, or protectionism, and it looks as though um, Trump single-handedly has managed to um, you know kind of battle off 19. Uh, counterparties and win. So, yeah, I think, I think it's bad news. And finally, what do you expect to see from the US dollar? Is further weakening on the cards? I think so. Um, I mean, it's quite surprising again because, you know, obviously the, it looks as though Yellen's going to be raising interest rates in the States. You know, we've, we've already, um, you know, we've already seen uh, a plan of action for 2017. So there's probably going to be at least another one or two rate rises this year. So you'd have thought that would help bolster the US dollar. Um, and if you look at the euro dollar compared to where it was a month ago, I mean, it's gone from 106 to 108. That's you know, that's a reasonable move. That's two big points. Um, and so I think it's I think it's at the moment it seems as though the euro seems to be quite bullish. Um, but I, as I say, I think it's going to be short lived. So I think in the short term, you know, certainly next few months, perhaps, I think you know the euro dollar will probably continue to 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 edge upwards. You know, suggesting dollar weakness, euro strength. Um, but I think the big, you know, the, the big white elephant in the room really is, is the Greece situation because uh, a lot of people have ignored or, or chosen to, uh, you know, maybe downplay the fact that Greece is looking for another bailout. Um, and certainly from an IMF point of view, the IMF and the ECB seem to have fallen out as well. And if they can't come to any sort of conclusion, then Greece will eventually default. Um, if it's not this year, it could be next year. 
and I think that potentially, especially if you have, you know, the Brexit going through, of course, as we've seen, then I think the euro in the long term, I mean, I, I wouldn't be buying the euro in the long term. I think the euro is probably going to fall um, pretty severely um, once all these political things get played out. Thank you, Ranji. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you for your insight. That's all for this weekly wrap. We'll be back on Monday for the week ahead. Until then, goodbye.